Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stomps stories. The St. Lucia Parliament takes a significant step towards bolstering regional security. St. Lucia secures additional flights from the UK market. Anticipation is high for St. Lucia's little folk tale at Carafesta. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. A bill to incorporate the CARICOM Arrest Warrant Treaty in the laws of St. Lucia has been passed. The treaty, which has been in existence since 2008, seeks to combat cross-border crime and enhance cooperation among law enforcement agencies and security in the CARICOM region. The treaty was developed in response to the deficiencies of the extradition laws in CARICOM member states. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney says, it is meant to provide a more efficient system of surrender of persons among CARICOM member states. In the Treaty of CARICOM Arrest Warrant, the warrant can be issued by a judge of the High Court for the arrest and surrender of a person who is reasonably suspected of having committed an offense for which the maximum penalty imprisonment for at least one year in the state, uh, state party that issued the warrant or has fled from justice after a custodial sentence has been imposed for that offense. St. Lucia must designate a central authority to be responsible for the administrative transmission and reception of the CARICOM arrest warrant and other correspondence relating to the warrant according to the treaty. A central authority of the issuing state party must make a request for the surrender of a person. When the request is received, St. Lucia as an executing party state is expected to take necessary measures against the requested person in compliance with the laws of St. Lucia. Honorable Shastney says provisions must be made in the law to empower a competent authority to arrest and detain someone under the warrant. The consent of an arrested person must be given to the executing authority in accordance with the laws of St. Lucia. If an arrested person con consents to be surrendered, the person must be surrendered within 48 hours of given consent. But if consent is not given, a decision in relation to the surrender of the person must be made within seven days of the arrest of the person. St. Lucia signed on to the CARICOM Arrest Warrant Treaty on July 6, 2017. The Integrating Water, Land and Ecosystems Management in Caribbean Small Island Developing States, IWACO Project, a five-year regional project that addresses water, land and biodiversity resource management, as well as climate change, continues to advance in St. Lucia. Amanda Faye Clark tells us the progress. Here in St. Lucia, the IWECO project will allow the application of existing proven technologies and approaches best suited for small island developing states and will work to improve the management of fresh and coastal water resources, land resources and forests. One such initiative under the project is currently underway in Forsyshak Soufre and is being facilitated through the Department of Forestry. Chief Forestry Officer Alfred Prosper says plans are running full steam ahead on the land stabilization project as farmers and residents alike have appreciated the need to implement sustainable land use and agriculture practices in order to safeguard life, property and agri-based livelihoods. The genesis of the initiative, he explains, is the widespread landslides and massive losses sustained by the Fossishak community after the passage of Hurricane Thomas in October of 2010. The project really came about to address what we call the bio, poor biophysical conditions of the Sufre watershed, meaning the, the, the devastation in terms of massive soil erosion, massive soil loss, mutation of rivers. So these are the poor biophysical conditions caused indirectly by poor land management, unsustainable land management in terms of that watershed. And it really involves stabilization of degraded areas, riverbanks, etc. We currently have 17 persons employed, and some of these persons are involved in the production of plants at our nursery. Because we have a nursery where we produce tree crops and forest trees, where we provide those trees to the farmers free of charge. We also do what we call farm assessments. So we don't just go and walk to a farm or farmer's holding and say, we're planting mahogany, we're planting um, mango, we're planting mahogany, um, sorry, um, coconuts, etc. We do what we call a farm assessment. So we actually go on the farm, we take the GPS position, we look at the farm 
farm activities happening. We look at some of the issues with regards to land management, soil erosion, etc. And we come with a recommendation and a plan for restoration, etc. So we've done almost 100 farms since the start of the project. IWECO is funded by the Global Environment Facility, Jeff, and the United Nations Environment Program is the lead implementing agency for the national and regional sub-projects, with the United Nations Development Program implementing some activities. From the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Fee Clark reporting. Following high-level discussions with government and tourism officials, premium carrier British Airways on Thursday, August 22, broke news of the introduction of two additional direct flights per week to St. Lucia. This comes as Virgin Atlantic Airways prepares to suspend services to the island in June of next year. Taking effect next summer, the no-tag flights will commence July 4, 2020 and will run throughout August 29, 2020. The flight offers three classes of service and will add an average of 600 additional seats weekly to facilitate travel to the island. Tourism Minister Honorable Dominic Feely says, together with the additional flights, several other marketing initiatives are being explored as a means of infusing added life into the British market. The additional flights will bring British Airways a scheduled direct service from London to St. Lucia up from seven to nine flights weekly. Currently, St. Lucia is serviced by 14 direct BA flights that interconnect between London, Trinidad and Grenada. Regional carrier Liat has reduced fares to St. Lucia just in time for St. Lucia Roots and Soul, slated for August 23 to 25, 2019. With 40% off airfares until Sunday, August 25, fans can seize the opportunity to connect on the high-frequency inter-island carrier to be a part of the music festival. The highly anticipated performance of legendary British reggae and pop band UB40 is expected to bring additional excitement to year-long celebrations in commemoration of St. Lucia's 40th anniversary of independence. The highly decorated group featuring Ali Campbell and Astro will sound off at the upcoming third annual St. Lucia Roots and Soul Festival, thrilling audiences with their extensive repertoire of fan favorites. And speaking of thrilling audiences, Friday, August 23, 2019, will be very special for two young St. Lucian writers as their play, A Little Folk Tale, is performed at Carafesta 14 in Trinidad and Tobago. GIS's Rajvara Lawrence reports. <laughs> The cast of A Little Folk Tale has been rehearsing enthusiastically for St. Lucia's biggest night at Carifesta 14. It's an even bigger occasion for the play's two young St. Lucian writers, 20-year-old Monique Ogist and 19-year-old Jesse Mayers. Their masterpiece, A Little Folk Tale, started as a secondary school project highlighting St. Lucian folk characters. We started off as an improv I did in secondary school in a theatre arts class and it was basically about this book that whatever you write in a book it comes to life. The play brings into focus four famous St. Lucian folk characters. Their stories passed down from generation to generation the background stories of St. Lucian folklore characters, the La Jablis, the Sukuyo, Kokma, and Tibolops. A Little Folk Tale became a theatre production at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College when Monique was asked to write a play for the school. She reflected on the secondary school research project and the many folk tales that excited her imagination over the years. Growing up, I heard stories about the theatre at school with my grandmother and I noticed we have not many people pass on these stories anymore. So I thought it would have been a good topic to highlight. It was at this stage Monique teamed up with Jesse Mayers, then a stage manager, to write and produce the play, now getting international attention at Carrie Festa 2019. We had a lot of fun writing the play, like we mesh really well together, we have a very similar sense of humor, a similar writing style, so sitting down with Monique was always fun. It's a very exciting experience I would say and humbling because like Jessie said, 
this started off as a very small project for Drama Club. Um, a lot of heart and effort was put into this and we really didn't expect any, we didn't expect it to go so far. Monico Geist and Jesse Mayers are hoping their exciting journey so far and the play itself will inspire young writers to explore their culture and to keep writing. One, I would advise other young artists and writers to go out there and create content because the reason why I think this play was so re well received was that it was kind of written with a young voice but it also has, it also bridges a gap between the older generation and I feel like sometimes we feel like we're not represented because you know, of course our Nobel laureates and everyone before us wrote plays but sometimes people find it difficult to identify you. So I would advise them to go out there, use your voice, don't give up. A Little Folktale was commissioned by the Cultural Development Foundation after director Drania Frederick spotted its potential and cross-generational appeal. From the Government Information Service, I am Rog Varo Lawrence reporting from Carifesta 14 in Trinidad and Tobago. And this is the NTN Nightly. We have more from Carifesta, but first, Ryan O'Brien has the sports. Hey, look at you breastfeeding. I gave him birth just now, but I don't think I can breastfeed. Why won't you breastfeed? The thing is, my breasts are so small. I don't think I will have enough milk for my baby. My dear, you can breastfeed. The size of your breast does not matter. The more the baby sucks on your breast, the more milk your breast will make. People say your breast will fall when you breastfeed. I don't want mine to fall. Eventually, all breasts will fall. Once you wear a supportive bra, it will help maintain the muscles of your breast while you breastfeed. Breast milk is very important for your baby's health. It is complete nutrition for your baby with the right nutrients. I did a lot of reading whilst I was pregnant and found out a lot of good things about breastfeeding. Really? Like what? You will lose the baby fat much easier when you breastfeed. The baby is more intelligent and the baby gets sick less. It is also cheaper and practical since you wouldn't have to buy artificial milk or boil bottles. Breastfeeding does all that? Eh eh. Now you make me want to breastfeed? I want my baby to be healthy and smart. There's more. In addition, I saved a lot of money from not having to buy formula. Do you know how expensive formula is? No formula? How is that possible? The baby will go hungry? No, the breast is adequate for the baby's need from birth to six months. The baby needs no other foods or liquids during that period. Is that so? My sister had a baby last year and my granny insisted she give the baby Toloma and she was only three months. Nothing before six months. The nutritionist will guide you on how to introduce foods to the baby. Wow, I learned a lot. I had no idea breastfeeding was that important. Yes, it is. Breastfeeding is the best thing you can do for your baby. Do it and you will see. You will also bond with your baby. I will, my girl. Nice talking to you. I'm happy to hear that. Also encourage your friends and family too. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome everyone to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. President of the St. Lucia Football Association, Lyndon Cooper, says it was very important that Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney, and the President of the Federation of International Football Associations, FIFA, Giovanni Infantino, toured the FIFA-funded football facility at Granivere Denry, as it provides them with some knowledge on how the sport is being developed on island. I think the president of FIFA wanted to see what the investment was, and now I think he is he, satisfied that where he, he thinks that small countries like St. Lucia ought to be. The visit itself is going to pay a lot of dividends for us because the Prime Minister is their CONCAF president, is their FIFA president, and they understand what the challenges are in order for us to be able to, to grow the game and to take the game to the next level. Cooper also revealed to the NTN Nightly News that the country can look forward to more success 
coming out of its youth program. The under-15 team, we're going to take a second look at it simply because I think their victory is more from an amateur setting. We will have to bring in the experts and all the consultants in order to erase the disparity of two, those boys so they could approach that game and the next round, which we which is sometime next year in the under-17 from a more professional standpoint. So this actual facility where we are standing right now, how much has that impacted on the success that you've realized so far? The first set of teams to train is the under-15 boys and those guys have, have been training for in excess of what, eight months and they actually began training on this stuff three or four days a week as of January of this year. And because of we have the facility, we, we could have managed to have one or two teams train on uninterrupted. The SLFA president spoke during a brief visit to St. Lucia by the FIFA president recently. Staying with football, a contingent of 16 boys and five staff from the Boys Training Center are currently in Grenada competing in the Caribbean Children's Charity Shield Soccer Tournament, which ends on Saturday. The St. Lucians are competing formidably in the under-17 category, having already reached the semi-final stage of the competition. Wang Sonson is a general manager of the BTC and is one of their five member staff accompanying the wards in Grenada. I believe that this trip is much more than football. It's first of all a, a, a form of rehabilitation for the boys, um, education because we have taken them on the twenty. Uh, we had taken them on a, a trip around the island where they visited all the historical sites in Grenada. So we're looking forward to participating in this tournament, being a very disciplined team in this tournament. And if we don't win, we would have achieved our ultimate goal, which is rehabilitation of the boys. Meanwhile, organizer Trisha Brown spoke about the aims of staging such a tournament. The Caribbean Children Charity Shield started in year 2014 in Barbados. It's actually a grassroots initiative which helps children from different stigmatized and marginalized football groups throughout the region. And we help through this program and this um, competition, we help children to develop and find their own self image and, and through sports, through, through the game football, we allow them to travel from country to country. The tournament was first held in Barbados in 2014 Trinidad and Tobago in 2015, Guyana 2016, St. Vincent and the Grenadines 2017, and held in St. Lucia last year. And before we leave you, parents and guardians of students who will be attending the St. Lucia Sports Academy, formerly known as the Groselle Secondary School, are invited to an important meeting on Saturday, August 24, 2019, from 11 a.m., at the Finance Administrative Center. Transportation arrangements will see the following buses, M465 departing the Philip Marsley Grand V4 at 10 a.m. and M538 departing from the Catholic Church by the Square in Soufre at 10 a.m. Parents are encouraged to assemble at the respective meeting points by 9.30 a.m. And in that, we have come to the end of your weekend update from Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The St. Lucia Cairo Festa Roadshow was taken to San Fernando this week, where an appreciative audience got to experience the varied talent and creativity of St. Lucian dancers and musicians. Rajvara Lawrence takes us behind the scenes with director Drinia Frederick as the cast prepares to perform at the Napa Rima Bowl in San Fernando. Today we're at Napa Rima Bowl and we're doing the first set of our contemporary pieces which we call Ocean's Crossing, um, Journey of One and Riptide which is based on the transatlantic um, slave period. The St. Lucia Carry Festa 14 delegation traveled an hour and a half to San Fernando on the island's west coast to tell the story of a people's resilience after the atrocities of slavery. It's a piece that we have taken from um, St. Lucia's story and adapted it, where the slaves are rising out of the sand under the sea and they're going on this journey to reach the new world and it's a piece of triumph. Traveling and performing in another Caribbean island, 
has been an enriching experience. Performers have had to adapt as they travel to different venues, each unique in its own way. Right now we're putting on our makeup and um, the dancers are sort of doing a sort of a memory exercise. We already did our technical rehearsals earlier. We had 20 minutes on stage and um, I think that I must commend them. We had never performed in this space. It's almost like a state-of-the-art theatre. For the St. Lucians, it's a learning experience. One they hope to energize a greater love for arts and culture in St. Lucia. What we have discovered as we're going through Trinidad and performing at different places that there is um, spaces to suit every performance, um, the, the theaters. And what is even more striking is the way that they take care of these institutions. <laughs> The St. Lucian cast is also inspired by the deep appreciation of audiences wherever they perform. You can see this general love for the arts and uh, I mean the audiences coming out to these performances. I mean this is almost in the middle of the afternoon at 6 o'clock on a Monday and the place is almost filled. The cast hosted St. Lucia night on Tuesday. And the big performance that everyone's been talking about is slated for Friday. That is the staging of a little folk tale. All persons who applied for admission to the divisions of Agriculture, Arts, Science and General Studies and Technical Education and Management Studies of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College for the 2019-2020 academic year are informed that they must collect their responses from the division to which they applied on Monday 26 August at 9 a.m. Picture identification must be presented in order to collect the responses. In cases where applicants are unable to collect their responses, a written authorization along with picture identification must be presented. Every effort must be made to collect the responses at the stipulated date and time. Further information is available on the college's website at www.salcc.edu.lc. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Coyol. La moins pop c'est chimer bon santé. Il est absolument nécessaire pour laver la main si vous voulez tenir bon santé. Quand même si vous n'avez pas de glossite, vous avez fait ces bagages là. Écoutez, laver la main souvent et puis glo net avec savon après condition qui ca simer 20 minutes. Par exemple, on ne peut laver la main après vous changer d'ailleurs pas. C'est vite pour vite. Vous tuez des monde qui blessé et ben malade. Après vous tuez des animaux et après vous entamer des ordres. Et si vous n'avez pas Pour sa sévi, sa yo ka kouye hand sanitizer et be alcohol pou 30 sekon. Lave le mèon souvent. Sa se yon manyer pou empêche maladi. Sou vle pli informasyon, kouye biwo informasyon santé a limero 468-6349. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Kweyon. Mese bedam, Departement Kine Wesko Sablete, Pour information en gouvernement, c'est le CGIS, à ce moment-là, Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui a posé ta nouvelle à Koyol, posé ta Primus Hutchinson. Il y a une législation qui trouve une recognition en cas de parlement, c'est un argument pour faire plus facile pour conduire à WET, à ce pays carré comme là, qui a servi un ou à WET contre n'importe qui qui fait un crime et qui peut trouver dans un lot à ce pays là. Bon, so, legislation, si l'on premier ministre Onibab Allen Chasne, qui fait possible pour yon juge si yon m'a mot contre yon moun qui fait yon crime, qui a porté jugement de yon l'an de prison, et bien, chapé yon de prison, et qui a servi yon se mam kare kom l'an, BCP kare kom l'an pou, si oui, premier ministre Chasne explique ki, la kaye ni yon komite setwal, qui a responsable pour administration et opération, si yon a want sa la, 
exercice qui ni pour implémenter tous ces outils qui nécessaires pour que la législation ça la suive à façon qui la pour loi qui fait aussi pour cet arrangement venir en place pour cette ici ni pour faire prisonner ça là si cette ici ni pour faire prisonner ça là avec la ou pays en autre pays car comme là côté yoni briser prisonner ça là mais ça est ni pour faire à bas loi cette ici à façon pour arrêter permis pour la dire mon ça là à la main pays à côté il fait comme là avec loi qui fait provision pour ni un ni un monde qui va être de haut pour lui Hold your lot, mam kari kom, kai fet a kawat na dita. Ta se si mou na mem prezate koi. Me si permission pa fet a lesa la, yon disisyon kai ni pou fet a set jou. Destination hod l'anglite pou set lesi, ja trouve yon bon kout chapeau. Ta se apwe la teni gwan diskisyon at les autorite avion British Airways, les officier gouvernman, ek les officier des affaires touristik. Ki pwen kou jedi le 22 septembre, Ou apok a di ki avyo British Airways ka y potwe de voyaj direk an plis pa simen pou set lesi soti al anglite. Ke voyaj nef sa la ka y komanse li 4 juye l'ane 2020 ek diwe pou jis li 29 aou l'ane 2020. Ke voyaj sa la ka y ofer 3 degwe servis ek ka y ousi ajoute 600 le an plis a bo avyo an tou le simen pou fasilite se pasay sa la pou set lesi. Premier ministre Honorable Alan Chastney deklare ki yo twe excite Pou touve bon nouvel sa la, ek kalite mwen chas la sa kay pote pou set lesi kontinue touve le touris soti l'anglite pou vise set lesi. Menezè a fe touristik onwab Dominic Fede, felicite e devlopman nef sa la pa British Airways ki set lesi ni yon wilas yo pou si telman lan tan. Menez Fede wimake ki initiatif sa la kay vewitabman ple toa voyaj sa la ki avion Virgin Atlantic ki te kompletman ek vid ek gwan ouve. Minis touristik la anonse ki la kay bay set lesi benefis de 200 de 200 le a bo avyo an an mwad juyet pou a ou. Minis la ajoute ki pa konsekans de sa yo ja pose atasyo yo asou plizye lot inisyetif de la plas kod l'anglite. Si voyaj nef sa la kay plase British Airways pou potiwe servis direk soti l'anglite pou set lesi soti 7 pou 9 voyaj tou le simen Presentman, set lesi ka trouve 14 servis hod British Airways ki ka konekte hod Trinidad ek la Grenade. Gany set lesi a spektak kare festa te vizite San Fernando en Trinidad, le di oswe kote yon gwan katite man publik la te apresi performasyo. Tou bonman, gop la performe te divers talan an fason de dans ek bo mizik. Te performans la moutwe l'histoire si le wa des eslavaj ek wizilias pep la. Directeur pour production et de diverses performances hors fondation de développement culturel en cette aussi. Junior Frederick explique qui y en a ces performances là montré à façon de ce levage là t'es sorti à Barcelone et pour entrer à la terre neuf là. Frederick avoue qui ces mêmes groupes là fait très bien pour manier ou abrasser ces défauts qu'on place là côté obtenu pour performer. Il aussi parle de manière j'ai entendu dans le cadre de ces théâtres et cultures et que manier aussi porter très fort ces performances là. Yo te a tre an etablisman tre bonè pou wè se set 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 lisi sa la pa ou fome. Kop set lisi a pou kare fè sa te chen yon swawe set lisi madi ki pasi ek prezante pli fò mwoso sa yo kare fè ou fome. Ta se a little folk tale yon til iswa de folklore. Ek se kousa nou a tre bout nouvel la. Mou kare mesye ou tan pou gade mou kabaw yon invitasyon. Jel pi mou a konsidye kosa fè la vi yon a prezante ou a lot nouvel a koyo la. Donc, à vieux pour cette eau, Michel. Merci, on pile, Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair to partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers today. Tonight into tomorrow, partly cloudy skies becoming cloudy at times with widely scattered showers and a chance of isolated thunderstorms, mainly over the northern lesser Antilles. Low-level moisture and instability will cause a few showery periods over the eastern Caribbean islands today. A tropical wave located a few hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is expected to bring cloudiness, showers and possible thunderstorms over the eastern Caribbean islands from Saturday into Sunday. 
Another tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. Tides for Castries Harbor low at 2.12 p.m., high at 8.58 p.m. Tides for View for Day low at 3.39 p.m., high at 10.05 p.m. Seas slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.51 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.